Today I'm going to take a pair of Zoomy Dream Vision VR headset goggles and turn them into macro binoculars inspired by Star Wars. Now these came from a thrift store. They cost me 99 cents and they didn't have the elastic headband that should have come with them. First thing I started to do was figure out how to tear it apart. It actually came apart pretty easy. There was only four screws. I had to remove some uh, foam to get to them, but that's not a big deal because I'm not gonna use that end of the part anyway. So then when I, once I got it apart, I realized that that piece looked really cool if I turned it around and mounted it backwards. But it kind of got in the way of the hinge, so I just took off the original front part. Being there are no head strap parts, I decided to just quickly snip off the head strap uh, bracket. Don't know where it went flying in the room. Then I decided to prime it. This is a red oxide primer I've really grown to like. I've used it in a few projects recently. It kind of looks like rust and it saves me one layer of paint where I try to make things look like there's rust on the bottom. Here I'm taking some liquid latex masking and I am going to probably mask way more than I should, but that's kind of my MO. I'm using my airbrush, just the air part of it, just to push the masking around and dry it some. Then I decided to try to take some uh, yellow and just paint around the edges of the masking. And then I took some rust color, but it didn't really help much there because the rust color kind of looks just like the primer. Then I went back to masking and where there was yellow, I masked again so that it'll give a layered look. Give that a few minutes to dry. And then I started to paint. This is a ghost white color that I thought looked good. Eventually you'll see that very little of this is ever even visible after I went to town painting the whole thing to make it look like it's been basically sitting in a bucket of water for who knows how long. Now that the paint's dry, I start to rub off the areas where the masking was. You can see where the yellow doesn't really show much and the rust color that I tried using doesn't even show at all. So it's basically just the primer and a little bit of the yellow that shows underneath. It definitely still shows a lot of wear and tear. It just doesn't look as much like rust as I thought it would. I think I should have painted with a silver or something before I painted with the white to give it a two-tone. I tried to fix this in a moment here when I get back to the bench using rub and buff silver, but the, the ghost white and the rub and buff, that's just too close that it really doesn't, it doesn't show up on camera well. These pieces had fell out when I took it apart. I decided to uh, put them back in and glue them in place so that they don't come out or move around. The uh, VR set actually had uh, left and right headphones. And then the one side that was actually a magnet that I think may have held the controller at some type point, but I didn't get the controller in for 99 cents. I didn't expect it. And what's a Star Wars prop without some lighting? I am putting these micro blinking lights right where the screw holes were. There were six uh, screw holes and so I'm going to add six lights. The two in the middle are red and the two on the outside are blue. Or four on the outside are blue, I'm sorry. Here you see them running just off of a three volt battery. Once I'm happy with that, I found a little single battery holder 
that I'm going to mount to the outside. Rather than soldering this time, I found a little, not like, a, it's like a Wagyu, but it's really cheap. I wouldn't use it for anything more than very, very low voltage, but it works. It's just a spring-loaded steel connector, or spring-loaded plastic connector with steel inserts. Added the CR32 battery. A little bit of super glue to the back and get it glued in place. Now I'm just removing some tape that I had over the lenses while I was painting in the paint booth. It's starting to look good so far. But it needs it, it needs something, so it's time to try to kind of Star Wars it up. First I did was the rub and buff I talked about earlier, which as you can see, it really doesn't help much. So then I started to find some greeblies to put in place. This is a piece left over from my shampoo bottle spaceship build. It was uh, my first concept for the thrusters it was the thrusters were a little too close together using this one so I had to enlarge it and now I'm gonna add some wires this is an old I don't know I think it's an old iPhone wire or something that was lying around that didn't work anymore it fit perfectly in one of the holes for the earpieces and then I found but I think this is an old nest camera that you see on the table. That's a part of a fan from my 3D printer when I replaced the hot end. And that is an R2D2 coin slot going on on that side. Now I'm going to take the Nest camera piece and I went over and I spray painted it silver really quick and didn't get that on camera because it only took me about a minute to paint it up and get it in place. The piece on top is actually a connector for LED strip lights, shop lights, that connect two lights together. Now I'm going to cover up the other eye hole. This I'm just going to use some craft foam. I just pressed it in place really quick to get an impression to figure out how big to cut it. And then fit it in place. And then I just hold it in place with a little bit of hot glue. This is one half of a Christmas bulb. I could have pushed it to one side or the other. I decided to push it to the inside. A little bit of super glue to hold it in place. And after almost losing it, just set it down in place. The activator for the super glue actually gave the uh, the ornament a frosted look. This is the end cap for the exact same uh, LED shop lights that I have. I have about four of them and so I have all these leftover pieces from when I put them in place and wire fits in there nicely so I'm going to run a wire from that over to the other side this whole thing came together just 
as I found stuff around the shop as I was building it, nothing was pre-planned. I had went shopping with my wife. We went to a thrift store and they had two of these and I bought both of them. Uh, they're two different models, so I still have the other one to figure out if I want to do this again to it or if I want to make something else out of it. But for 99 cents, it's not going to hurt anything sitting around until I come up with an idea. Now to make it look like it's been sitting around for years, I'm using some Vallejo wash. This is very, very watered down wash. Um, and I end up even watering it down more. And I decided to, after I've watered it down, I literally paint the entire part with it. Then I mixed in a little bit of black into the wash. I buy these really, really cheap disposable brushes from the dollar store for a pack of like 10 or 20. And so when I'm done, I throw them away. I'm not worried about destroying the brush. Here I'm taking some orange rust color and I'm actually trying to age the leather pad for the backside of it. And then I'm just taking and hitting spots with the orange paint to use up what I have in the in the in the brush because I don't want to waste it. And here's the final product. It looks like it's been sitting around for years. And even with all the wear and tear, the lights still work.